Paleontologists have developed a groundbreaking mathematical formula that we can use to determine the personalities of extinct dinosaurs based on their skull morphology. Today, we'll be applying that formula to Tyrannosaurus in the first episode of this soon-to-be critically acclaimed documentary series, Paleopsychology. Let's dive in. The formula is as follows. Maxilla length relative to dentary length correlates with nerdiness. The longer the maxilla, the nerdier the individual. Posterior width of the skull is directly correlated with street smarts. Dentary curvature is associated with lack of intelligence. Trust me, the brain is in the jawline. Beyond that, trust your gut as a paleopsychologist. Your first impression is always correct. Sue is the grandmother who rides her motorcycle everywhere, collects vintage beer cans, and has been in jail four times. Each of her family members only know about two of them, and one of the charges was for manslaughter. Trix is the wine aunt who lives a thousand miles away and likes the idea of nieces and nephews, but buys their affection when she visits rather than taking time to get to know them. She's obsessed with essential oils and is trying to start a fitness TikTok, but can't keep her workout routine consistent. Stan is a journalist, but he majored in civil engineering, then switched careers after he realized the grind of mathematics wasn't for him. Like Dr. Mike, he boxes on the side and keeps a large dog as a pet. He broke his neck in one fight, but walked it off. Scotty runs his own nightclub, but pretends to be a bouncer to avoid administrative duties. He's a tough guy with awkward social skills and works hard to be the nicest person in the room. That won't stop him from throwing bad customers out on the street, though. Business is business, and he's got to pay the rent somehow. Tuff's love is a nerd, plain and simple, but a nerd with a black belt. He spends his days training in the dojo and his nights programming Pokemon fan games. He's deathly afraid of spiders, even though he has no logical reason to be, but he can't wait to ask the goth girl to prom. He doesn't get it either. Arwen went to a modern dance school and avoided burnout by playing Baldur's Gate 3 in the wee hours of the morning. Now she dances for Ballet West and, in her free time, of which she has little, can be seen teaching little kids to read at her local library. Oh, and she's also a model for tactical gear. Pax Rex works in construction. He's the guy that always insists on piloting the crane, the wrecking ball, and the bulldozer, but he's also so jacked that nobody tries to stop him. After work, he watches the Great British Bake Off and replicates the desserts perfectly. Custer laughs at his own jokes, but they are genuinely funny. He flunked out of high school and started life as a stand-up comedian who specializes in self-deprecating humor. He also has a deep-seated fear of balloons popping, thanks to a childhood incident. Roberta works at a 1950s diner by day and beats up thugs in the street by night. She keeps a bucket of candy with her while waiting tables, just in case there are little kids, and an assault vest full of knives when she's doing her vigilante work. Bucky is on the front line in her cheer team and is almost intimidatingly buff for a high schooler. She's taken state three times and will not let anything get in the way of a fourth championship trophy, but is also nice enough to go out of her way to help you with your homework. Wankler Rex harbors a love for Star Trek and Dune and will take every opportunity at family gatherings to remind you about the upcoming Comic-Con. He's also weirdly attractive and has dated multiple celebrities, but never found any of his past relationships fulfilling. Right now, he's going out with Daisy Ridley and is wrestling with both his interest in her and his hatred of the Star Wars sequels. B-Rex is toiling away in nursing school because she doesn't like the idea of not being able to do CPR in emergencies. She has not yet realized that she can get CPR certified without becoming a nurse, but she's so passionate about it that none of her classmates have the heart to tell her the truth. Samson is the golden retriever of the Tyrannosaurus genus. He has 6,000 merit badges, donates way too much to charity every year, and always ropes his friends into running marathons to raise awareness for homeless dogs. Custer is convinced that Samson is actually a communist spy. Tristan Otto has seen things. Terrible things. After the war, he set up a knitting business, which only lasted six months before he decided to be edgy and move on to gothic jewelry. Now you've got a friend in the black diamond business. Thomas has no right to be as charismatic as he is, but... Well, he is. He became the student body president without even running for the position, started the Chad Club at the high school, and every year lights the torch at the Mega Theropod Olympic Games. He chalks up his popularity to being mainly raced by his grandma, Sue, and credits her positive influence. Victoria loves laser tag, which will come as no surprise to anyone who spent more than five minutes around her. Her ability to suddenly appear around corners is horrifying in the arena, and it stems from her living in the woods as a kid since her dad was obsessed with wilderness survival skills. If the Spinosaurid apocalypse ever hit, Victoria would be the Rex to call. Ivan is a writer, philosopher, and hypochondriac. At parties, the other Rexes typically avoid him since he's always lamenting about the emptiness of life and how nothing he does matters, and they all know he's just looking for something else to do after he quit playing Farmville for 12 hours a day. And that's all for this episode. Let me know if you enjoyed a bit of a sillier video with a like and subscribe, and make sure to comment with more episode requests. I'm Davidan, and I'll see you next time.